insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 165, Assertiveness. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my confident and assertive co-host, Madison. You know, I really think you're just calling me out at this point. <laughs> anyway, hi, everybody. I am trying to bring out the best in you. If you think it, you can be it, right? Sure. <sighs> Tough crowd. I, I know. So how was your week this week? A bit weird. Yeah, mine too. So I was homesick with a migraine, and you wound up coming home sooner than you expected with some stomach issues. Yep. And I don't know about you, but I've been playing catch up all week since then. Yeah, I mean, I was off Wednesday because they told me they had, like, excuse me. No, I wasn't off Tuesday. I was off Wednesday. Tuesday was when I wasn't feeling well. They gave me an off day for Wednesday. Oh, wait. Was I out Tuesday? Yes. So it wasn't Monday. I'm so confused. I really am. Yeah, it's Thursday now. I, I need this week to be over just so I can reset the week. Yeah. But anyway, you're feeling better now? Uh, it's still kind of iffy, but, you know, I was good enough to go to school today. Okay. Did you make it through the day okay? Mm, I survived. Okay. Well, sometimes that's the most we can hope for, right? Yeah. Anyway, today we're talking about assertiveness. So assertiveness is about communication and confidence. Being able to convey your needs, thoughts, and desires in a way that is constructive and acceptable is a key part of any interaction with other people. On today's episode of Insights into Teens, we'll take a look at what it means to be assertive, the benefits that come from being assertive, and the techniques you'll need to be more assertive. But before we do that, uh, I would like to take a moment to uh, encourage our listening and viewing audience, if you don't already do so, to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're available anywhere you can get a podcast these days, Apple, Spotify, Google, etc. I would also encourage you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We can be found on Twitter at insights underscore things, or you can find links to all of our social media on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we start? Sure. Here we go. So once again, we're digging deep into the well of kidshealth.org for today's topic. So what is assertiveness? Assertiveness is a healthy way of communicating. That's the bottom line. It's the ability to speak up for ourselves in a way that is honest and respectful. Every day we're in situations where being assertive can help us, like asking someone on a date, approaching a teacher with a question, or doing well on a job or a college interview. Being assertive doesn't come naturally to everyone. Some people communicate in a way that's too passive, while other people have a style that may be too aggressive. An assertive style is kind of the happy medium between these two. So here's what it means to be assertive. It means you can give an opinion or say how you feel. 
You can ask what you want or what you need. You can disagree respectfully. You can offer your ideas and suggestions. Or you can say no without feeling guilty. Or you can speak up for someone else. Why being assertive matters. An assertive communication style can help us do the things we want to do. But it goes further than that. Being assertive shows we respect ourselves and other people. People who speak assertively send the message that they believe in themselves. They are not too timid that they are, and they're not too pushy. They know that their feelings and ideas matter. They're confident. People who are assertive tend to make friends more easily. They communicate in a way that respects other people's needs as well as their own. They tend to be better at working out conflicts and disagreements. And people who give respect get respect in return. So on a scale of 1 to 10, <clears throat> 10 being very assertive, 1 being not very assertive, where do you think you fall on that scale? Two and a half. That's, that's kind of low there. Yeah. Do you think that, that that low level of assertiveness has an impact on the way that people treat you or things, the way you interact with others, or maybe even a lack of opportunities that you normally would have if you were a little bit more assertive? Yeah, pretty much. I've had like so many instances recently that have made me realize that, wow, I am not that assertive and I do not speak up for my own needs. Uh, uh, I have uh, one of the best things. It's probably not anything to do with me being assertive, but when I was at the orthodontist appointment, uh, I was actually like, glossed over like they forgot I was there like they jumped over me so that was fun because I waited for like another 30 minutes before they actually started working on me that was fun uh, I've had various incidents in school where like I've refused to say anything and really I've also just recently noticed that my general interactions with people I kind of just apologize for things that I don't think I needed to apologize for or I just feel weird uh, with people giving me stuff so, do you know why you're passive? Is it that you're, or why you're not assertive? Is it that you're an overly passive individual? Are you just non-confrontational? Are you uncomfortable talking to people? What do you think is the root cause of your lack of assertiveness? I guess it can technically be all three things you listed. I've not, I'm not a very confrontational person I try not to, I, I don't really think I'd want to, you know, try to confront somebody. That's not really how I roll. I don't really like to talk to people um, all that much. And I've realized that I also am kind of sort of a people pleaser in a way, as much as I don't want to be as much of a people pleaser as I am. I, I feel like I can tend to be like that sometimes. So... Is it something where you don't stick up for yourself or you don't feel like you're deserving of the things that you think you should be assertive on? Is it a self-doubt? Is it a confidence uh, issue or a lack of confidence? Or are you just a naturally shy and, and withdrawn person? Honestly, I do think it is a lack of confidence. Um, we've talked about that on the podcast before and... As much as I'd like to say I'm a confident person, there are just certain things that I'm like, okay, never mind then. Okay. Is this something that you think you'd like to improve? Yeah. Um, seeing, like, the various things that happen and the fact that, like, it'd be real nice if I could be a little more assertive and, you know, at least learn that lesson, I'd really like to find a way to do so. So who in life that you associate with now or that you <clears throat> spend any time with, who would you think is, is assertive, appropriately assertive, we'll say? Uh, I guess I'll go with, hmm. I'll go with you. Okay. At some points. <laughs> All right, you got to qualify that. Well, like, thing is, 
you're a very assertive person and you don't like it when, like, you don't feel like you're being treated right. And, like, you've told Mommy and I in certain instances where if we're not being treated right, you got to stick up for yourselves or I'm going to do it. So that's a very good point. So do you think it's appropriate to be assertive or do you think it's inappropriate to be assertive? Well, I guess it depends on the amount of assertiveness and, like, the level of appropriateness when it comes to it. Because it's like, in certain things, yeah, I wish I would say more stuff because it's like, it's an issue that I feel could be solved. So if I actually spoke up about it, it'd be fixed. But then when it comes to, like, more extreme levels of being assertive and immediately saying my way, then, like, I could come off being more aggressive, and I could be seen as being the bad guy in the situation. So you had a a very good situation last year in school where assertiveness had a surprisingly positive effect for you. And we talked about it on the podcast before. So you had a, a substitute in one of your classes, and the substitute said something that was gender inappropriate, we'll say. And that bothered you. And you were assertive in that disgruntled nature. Tell us about that. that You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Talk about that for a little bit and tell me how it felt when you were, when, when that assertiveness kicked in for you. Why did it kick in then, but it doesn't other times? And what was the ultimate outcome? Was it what you thought it was going to be? Well, uh, basically what ended up happening was uh, I got uncomfortable with the idea, and when my teacher was back, I kind of let them know because it was bothering me. And, you know, they were very supportive and on my side and were willing to let me um, go and were willing to, like, try to make a difference about it. So I was called down to the office and basically we, we talked about the incident and I like wrote something down. Um, so, you know, there was some progress, uh, from it. So what caused that assertiveness in that case? Was it mommy and daddy kind of, you came home and told us about it. Was it, was it me being overly assertive? and telling you to do something about it? Or was this something that you took the initiative on yourself? I guess it was kind of both. I was kind of motivated by when I told you and what you told me to do, and then it was kind of just like I decided to finally do it on my own. And and were you pleased with what that outcome was? Yeah. Um, I was, yeah. How did you feel when you exercised that assertiveness? Um, well, I, I guess I, I felt good because, you know, I was finally able to, uh, I was able to like stick up for something and, you know, uh, I, uh, uh, I felt good afterwards. Yeah. And I, and I think if nothing else, the important lesson to be learned from that specific example is you have a right to those feelings. You have a right to be respected. You have a right to be treated right, to be treated well. And if that doesn't happen and someone disrespects you or someone says something that offends you, you have a right to speak up and defend yourself. And yeah, there's a certain amount of confidence that you have to have in order to take that initiative, but you have that right no matter what. So you should never let someone put you in a position like that or disrespect you like that without saying something. And, and you do it respectfully, like you did in this case here, and it, you get a positive outcome from that. So it's important to understand that assertiveness is about communication. And, you know, like we, we said in the, in the read-through, communication with assertiveness through communication is about respect. You know, it's about giving respect, getting respect in return, and assertiveness is kind of the highway to get you to that point. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the problems with being too passive. We'll be right back. In 
Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about assertiveness. And now we're going to talk about the problems of being too passive. So Paula has a style that's too passive. If you ask Paula what movie she wants to see, she's most likely to say, I don't know, what what do you want to see? She usually lets others decide things, but later she regrets not saying what she wanted. It bothers her that her friends do most of the talking, but when Paula tries to break into the conversation, she speaks so softly that others talk over her without realizing. People who act too passively often end up feeling taken advantage of. They may begin to feel hurt, angry, or resentful. When you hold back what you think and feel, others don't get to know or understand you as well as they should. I could. The group doesn't benefit from your input or ideas. If you start to feel like your opinions or feelings don't count, it can lower your confidence and rob you of the chance to get recognition and positive feedback for your good ideas. It can even lead to feeling depressed. Now, of course... There's also trouble with being too aggressive. Janine has a style that's too aggressive. Janine has no trouble speaking her mind. But when she does, she comes across as loud and opinionated. Janine dominates the conversation, often interrupts, and rarely listens. If she disagrees with you, she lets you know, usually with sarcasm or a put-down. She has a reputation for being bossy and insensitive. People who come across as too aggressive can find it difficult to keep friends. They may dominate conversations or give their opinions too boldly and forcefully, leaving others feeling put off or disrespected. People with an aggressive style may get other people to do things their way, but many times they end up being rejected or disliked. They often lose the respect of others. So why isn't everyone assertive? So Ben has an assertive style. When you ask for Ben's opinion, he gives it honestly. If he, dis- if he disagrees with you, he'll say so, but in a way that doesn't put you down and make you feel wrong. Ben is, in- ben is interested in your opinion too. He listens to what you have to say. Even when Ben disagrees with you, you can f- still feel he respects your point of view. Why do some people have assertive communication styles when others are more passive or aggressive? Part of it's just personality. The habits we develop or the experiences we have are another part. But we also learn to be assertive, passive, or aggressive from watching how others act, especially the people who raise us. So here are some things that can influence people to act too passively. And we've talked about a number of these already a lack of confidence in themselves or the value of their opinions, worrying too much about pleasing others or being liked, worrying whether others will disagree with or reject their ideas and opinions, feeling sensitive to criticism or hurt by past experiences when their ideas were ignored or rejected, and not developing the skills of being assertive. Things that can influence people to act too aggressively include being overconfident, focusing too much on getting their needs met and their opinions across, not learning to respect or consider other people's views or needs, and not learning listening skills or how to ask for input from others. 
So things that can lead people to act assertively or just right include self-confidence, believing their opinions count, their ideas and feelings matter, and they have the right to express themselves. Being resilient or being able to deal with criticism, rejection, and setbacks. Respecting the preferences and needs of others. Having role models for assertiveness. And knowing their ideas were welcomed or assertiveness rewarded in the past. So it's worthwhile to kind of run down these and, and just take a look at some of the reasons for acting too passively. We've already talked about a lack of confidence in yourself. Do you value your opinions? Do you think your opinions matter? I mean, yeah, I do have like a value in my, uh, my opinions and behind closed doors. Like I speak very passionately about what I believe in. So I definitely hold my opinions to a high standard. I would agree with that. You already said you're a people pleaser. So worrying too much about pleasing others or being liked. So the pleasing others part, I think we can certainly check that box. What about being liked? Are you concerned about other people liking you? And is that something that makes you more passive? I mean, I wouldn't mind if people liked me, but I guess they may not be, like, my biggest concern. Like, I don't, I know I can't get everybody to like me, and I'm not, like, I want to be friends with everybody. Um... So I wouldn't say that's as big of a concern. Okay. What about disagreement or rejection? Do you worry that, that others will disagree with what you might have to say or might reject you for what you do say when you're assertive? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of scared, especially when I talk to teachers. If I ask them things, I'm like terrified of them saying no. F like for no real good reason, I guess. I just... I, I get scared whenever I have to ask my teachers something and, like, it's a yes or no question because, like, I don't know. I guess I associate no with being a much more negative answer and I'm just somewhat terrified of it. Well, and let's put things into perspective. These aren't life and death questions you're asking. They're not pass or fail. They're not going to fail you, right? So what's the worst thing that a no could do? Um. They, the thing that I want just doesn't happen. Right. But if you don't ask, it's probably not going to happen anyway, right? Yeah. So, you know, Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. He was a famous hockey player. Yep. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So if you don't ask that yes or no question, it's always going to be no. If you ask it, there's a fair chance it might be yes. So that's something to keep in mind when, when you're struggling with that. Yeah. What about criticism? You know, do you, are you sensitive to criticism? Have you been hurt in the past when you've expressed yourself? Were your ideas ignored or rejected? Is that something that's sort of in the back of your mind in these situations? Well, I mean, I, can, I definitely think I'm able to handle criticism. Um, as long as, you know, it's proper criticism, I can... Feel like, I feel like I can certainly handle criticism uh, in a passive way. Um, having my ideas kind of ignored and rejected, it probably hurts a bit more. Uh, so I think that, you know, that hurts everybody's ego and opinion when their ideas are rejected. But when your ideas aren't even heard and they don't even get a chance to be rejected, how does that make you feel if, if like, your thoughts, like, you have all these great thoughts. You're, you've, you've got this incredibly creative personality and creative brain, and you express that in, in various ways. If you didn't express that and you kept that all bottled up inside, doesn't that have its own negative connotations and consequences? I guess so. Um, I mean, like, I really do enjoy creating stuff, and... It I like having the outlet for it, and I can definitely say that if I didn't have that outlet and it was all just kind of stuck in my mind, yeah, it would probably be pretty negative. Yeah, so I think maybe you exhibit some of the symptoms that we have here, but I don't think any of the thin things that you exhibit are an impossible 
obstacle to overcome. So I really think it, it literally is just about building the skill set for it. Do you exhibit, let's, let's take a look at the too aggressive. Do you exhibit any of these? Are you overconfident? Obviously, that's not going to be an issue in this case here. We're still working on our confidence levels. Do you focus too much on getting your needs met and getting your opinion across? Probably not my needs because I recently had the development of the stomach problems. I refused to go to the nurse. And, uh, and like at the end of the day, it was like, yeah, you probably should have gone to the nurse earlier. So it's like, yeah, I don't hold my needs as high of a, as high as I probably should. Yeah, that we need to work on. How about not learning to respect or consider other people's views? I wouldn't say that. I personally can, I personally really respect other people's views and opinions. And, you know, I don't, uh, I don't like want to not consider them. Like you and I have our like healthy arguments. Sure. Yeah, I think, I think. I think you're covered on this one here. I think you're, you're just to the point where you're just right for your respect for others and their needs. What about listening skills or taking input from other people? Do you think you're open-minded with that? Yeah. Um, and in fact, I'm actually kind of an outlet for a lot of my friends to kind of talk about stuff with them because I'm a good listener and uh, asking for my input on others for mothers, uh, you know, occasionally I'll show people like work I've done or stuff I've done and ask for their opinion on them. Yeah. So based on this criteria of too passive and too aggressive, you're kind of in the middle, which is kind of where you need to be. So I would probably grade you higher. You said you were a 2.5 on that scale of one to 10. I'd probably put you at about a four. You're probably a little below average, but I think you're much better off than you think you are when it comes to assertiveness, especially when it comes to things that are important to you. When something is important to you and it's something that you believe in deeply, you can be assertive. You're passive most of the time, but there's, there's those few causes that you'll get behind that demonstrate that assertiveness. And again, it's one of those things where it's a matter of practice. You know, I didn't get to be loud and obnoxious like I am now. I mean, you know me when it comes, especially if we're talking about something Disney and, you know, Disney, my expectations for Disney aren't met. I tend to be overly assertive when it comes to stuff like that. Yep. Um, when it's things where it's protecting my family or it's costing me money or something like that, I tend to be very aggressive when it comes to stuff like that. But yeah, that kind comes with practice. You know, I've had years of practice dealing with that stuff. And in my line of work, I have to deal with vendors all the time. And if you're passive with vendors, it costs the company hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars if you don't do it right. So it's, it's one of those things that took years to get to, but it's definitely a learned, acquired skill. So we just have to practice more. I, I think you do it when it's important, when it really matters, you're assertive. And, and that's the most important thing. So we're going to take another break. We're going to come back and we'll talk about how to be more assertive. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. 
Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We are talking about assertiveness. So how can you be more assertive? That's, I guess, the, the important question here. Being assertive is a matter of practicing certain communication skills and having the right inner attitude. Some people are naturally more skillful when it comes to being assertive. Others need a little bit more practice. But everyone can improve, and here's how. Start by considering which communication style, assertive, passive, or aggressive, comes closest to yours. Then decide whether you need to work on being less passive, less aggressive, or simply need to build on your naturally assertive style. So some tips to work on being less passive and more assertive include paying attention to what you think, feel, want, and prefer. You need to be aware of these things before you can communicate them to others. Notice if you say, I don't know, or I don't, I don't care, or it doesn't matter when someone asks what you want. Stop yourself. Practice saying what you'd prefer, especially on things that hardly matter. For example, if someone says, would you like green or red? You can say, I'd prefer the green one, thanks. You should also practice asking for things. For example, can you please pass me the spoon? I need a pen. Does anyone have an extra? Can you, give, can you save me a seat? This builds your skills and confidence for when you need to talk for s- something more important. When you, when you need to ask for something more important. You should also give your opinion. Say whether or not you like the movie you saw and why. Practice using I statements such as I'd like, I'd prefer, or I feel. You should also find a role model who, who's good at being assertive, not too passive and not too aggressive. See if you can imitate that person's best qualities. And finally, you should remind yourself that your ideas and opinions are, are as important as everyone else's. Know th- knowing this helps you be assertive. Assertiveness starts with an inner attitude of valuing yourself as much as you value others. So to work on being less aggressive and more assertive, try letting others speak first. Notice if you interrupt. Catch yourself and say, oh, sorry, go ahead and let the other person finish. Ask someone else's opinion, then listen to the answer. When you disagree, try to say so without putting the other person's point of view down. For example, instead of saying, that's a stupid idea, try something like, I don't really like that idea. Or instead of saying, he's such a word that I don't want to say on here, try saying, I think he's insensitive. And again, find a role model who's good at being assertive, not too passive, not too aggressive, and see if you can uh, imitate that person. Even naturally assertive people can build and expand their skills. To work on improving a naturally assertive style, you should find role models who are good at being assertive, not too passive, not too aggressive. See if you can imitate their best qualities. You'll notice this is the same tip we gave for helping with a style that's too passive or too aggressive. That's because we never stop learning. Notice when you're best Notice when you're best at being assertive. People behave differently in different situations. Many people find it's easy to be assertive in certain situations, like with friends, but more challenging in others, like with teachers or when meeting new pe- new people. In tougher situations, try thinking what would I say to my close friends? Sorry, I was joking there. Sorry. When you speak assertively, it shows you believe in yourself. Building assertiveness is one step to becoming your best self, the person you want to be. And I think that's an important aspect of things to keep in mind here is the idea of being assertive is about improving yourself. It's about learning. It's about respect. It's about self-confidence. And all those things combined help to make you a better person. 
Do you want to be more assertive in your day-to-day life? Honestly, yeah. Uh, I don't want to be, like, too assertive to the point where I don't, like, listen to other people's opinions, but I'd like to be more assertive than how I am now, in which I kind of just, like, don't mention a lot of my own opinions, and it'd be nice to be more assertive in certain situations rather than just being assertive in only a few. So after talking about this, do you envision situations where your lack of assertiveness may have caused you a disadvantage or you may have lost out on things because you weren't assertive? Um, well, the best example, um, I can think of is, um, even though I technically didn't really lose out too much, but basically what ended up happening was I had a history project, uh, and it was like a big poster. It was going to be due in a week, and we had like a lot of stuff that we had to do for it. And the thing was, it was partner based. Um, and like you got only another, you only di- got one partner each, and you can only work with one other person, basically. There were 11 students. That math doesn't work out very well. No, it doesn't. Shame it wasn't math class. They probably could have figured that part out. Yeah. And I was the one person that didn't get a partner. And, you know, I kind of didn't really like that because I was put under a lot of stress at first because it was like, well, I feel like I'm doing the work of two people, so that's just great. Right. With, like, the same amount of time. And even when you guys said, like, hey, maybe you should mention something to your teacher, I kind of didn't for a I, d- I kind of didn't, and you guys actually had to step in for me. I mean, how did that work out? Well, um, I was given extra time if I needed it. But which, you, he, which you didn't. Yeah. But he ended up uh, being sick at one point, so he gave us an extra day anyway, so it's like... Hmm. Okay. That was convenient. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay, so that's a good example of a situation where had you been more assertive, maybe you could have rectified that instead of having to be burdened by being the only person working on that project or by getting extra credit for being the only person. So I I think the important thing to understand is there are times that not being assertive can be disadvantageous for you. And I'm not saying you need to be assertive all the time. And I think for the most part, this being a glaring exception, for the most part, when it's important, you assert yourself. If it's something that you need, something that you want, something that bothers you, you rise to the occasion. You're not assertive all the time. Maybe you could be more assertive. But I think in those times that it's important and you stand up for the things that you believe in, your assertiveness comes out. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say that, like, especially when it concerns issues that I care deeply about, yeah, I can certainly be uh, much more assertive. And and I'll tell you, even the stuff that's not that important, you know, when if we're working, if you come to me and you have a creative project you're working on, stuff you were doing for mommy for her birthday, for instance. You have your creative ideas, you come to me, you pitch them to me, and I'll, as delicately as possible and as creatively as possible, critique them. And I'll give you my opinion on them. And when you don't agree with my opinion, you don't have a problem disagreeing with me. And then we'll talk it out and You know, we'll respect each other's opinions. So even on situations where it's not that important, you still demonstrate your assertiveness. And I'm sure that comes from a comfort level that you have with me, knowing that you can have those kinds of discussions with me and we're not going to get angry at each other or anything like that. I think the important thing is you have to get to that comfort level with others as well. And I think if you do you'll find that being assertive is a two-way street. People are going to be assertive with you. You'll be assertive with them. That assertiveness builds that respect. You know, when you come to me with an opinion and your opinion differs from mine, I still respect your opinion. In, In fact, when you make your point, 
that builds that respect. The fact that you can stand behind it, you don't back down. If you really think that something should be a certain way, I respect you for that. And other people will too. You know, it's difficult using myself or mommy as examples there because of that level of comfort. But you have to believe that you'll get to that level of comfort where you'll have that respect with others. So that was all we have. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing thoughts. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that assertiveness is something that is very important for you personally, and it will really help you throughout your life. It's important that you find a perfect balance, much like everything in life, because, you know, you can't have it. You can't always have it one way or the other. Being too passive could cause you to be stepped on, could cause you to never be able to have your ideas expressed thoroughly, and thus you're always going to be unsatisfied. Being too aggressive could cause you to not consider other people's opinions and could have cause other people to lose respect in you. So really, it's important to find a perfect balance where you can respect other people's opinions, but also respect your own at the same time. Okay. Sage advice as always. Uh, thank you. Uh, that was it. Before we do go, though, I do want to once again uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. Audio versions of this podcast can be found listed as insights into teens. Audio and visual versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as insights into teens. Nope. Insights into things. Scratch that. Sorry. Isn't that like the second time you've messed that up? Uh, I, yeah, and I have a script. It's, I have a script and I have a, a, a screen here that I have it up on. So, and, and I've done 165 of these. So you think I'd have it down by now. <laughs> Anyway, um, we would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. You can find us streaming six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things, as well as YouTube, where you'll find all of our episodes, all of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things, where you get links to all that and more on our official website at insights into things.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, insights and entertainment hosted by you and mommy in which you guys are actually doing a podcast. So nice. <laughs> and it's at tonight tomorrow. Are not really monthly podcast anymore, hosted by you and my brother Sam. All right, that's a that's a sales pitch if I ever heard one. I know, right? That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.